For EP, climbing walls and handholds is our business, but that's really not why we're here. We're here to enrich people's lives and introduce climbing to the world. We know that once somebody gets an opportunity to go indoors and climb on a climbing wall, that they're going to be hooked and they're going to be a climber for life. Hello and welcome to the 2015 IFSC Bouldering World Cup in the beautiful sunny Haiyang, China. Um, we just finished up a uh, semi-final bouldering round uh, where 20 female and 20 male athletes went head to head on four boulders and we took the top six from each uh, category and we are here ready for our finals. I'm here with uh, Leah Crane and um, my name is Josh Larson and we'll be doing some of the announcing for you guys. It was going to be Walta, but now it's uh, myself, Josh Larson from the U.S. and Leah Crane. And uh, here's Leah Crane with uh, a few words about um, the semifinal round and how it went for her. Hello, everyone. Um, like. Like Josh said, I'm Leah. Um, the semi-finals, it was, a, it, was a, it was a really good round, really fun boulders. It was kind of a bit of a mix-up um, in, this, in this round, just because the qualifiers for us were pretty hard and the semi-finals were generally a little bit easier than normal. So um, I had a really good time on the blocks. They were really fun. Unfortunately, um, a slip cost me actually a, f a place in the final. Um, slightly annoying it would have been my first one but never mind um so yeah here i am commentating with josh and fingers crossed for a good final Let's welcome Ian, come from Germany. Welcome. So first up for the girls, we have Miho from Japan. First up for the guys, we have Jan Hoyer from Germany. Next up, next to Miho is Melissa Lenerve from France. And in fifth place for the guys, Let's 
Okay, so in sixth place we have Alban Levier from France. In fifth place we have Jan Hoyer. In fourth place we have Minoru Nakano. In fourth place we have Rushdam Gelmanov. In second place, Adam Ondra. In the girls, in third place, in fourth place, sorry, we have Shauna Coxey. In third place, we have Petra Klinger from Switzerland. Second place, who's just come out, is Akio Noguchi from Japan. In first place for the guys, we have Jong Won Chong from Korea. And the winner of our women's semi final category, category is Katerina Sauvine from Austria. So right now, um, the athletes have two minutes for uh, route preview. Um, they are going through the moves as a group um, through each boulder prom. And basically, they um, talk amongst each other or themselves about the beta and try to figure out um, what the setters are trying to force and uh, maybe what the climbers want to do that the setters don't want them to do. Uh, they're allowed to s touch the start holds or anything that's uh, taped. Uh, as long as uh, one point is still on the ground. And yeah, you'll see them running around and uh, checking out around the corners and angles. And uh, this is a, we call it sometimes uh, cat boxing. There's a bunch of cats kind of like figuring out. Um, well, it just looks funny, basically. Everyone's got their hands up and uh, they're not doing anything. So uh, we call this root preview. It's uh, And here are your six female finalists. Um, we have, uh, which is, uh, it's very cool to have uh, Katiana in, um, in the first place, which um, beating out Akio Noguchi in the semifinal round. Akio Noguchi has been on fire this year um, with, has she had, has she had uh, two wins, two golds? She's had two golds already this season, so. Um, she won in Haiyang last year here, so we'll see if she's uh, ready to defend her title and bump up a spot. Here are their stats. Uh, we have Miho uh, Nanaka, female, 17 from Tio uh, Tokyo. Um, 2014, she placed uh, fourth in Toronto, Canada. Um, and also in 2014, she placed second in Laval. So she's inching her way to the top of the podium. And uh, we've seen a strong performance from her this year already. Uh, last time here for Miho was uh, sixth place, uh, which was finals. And uh, we'll see if she can, again, work her way up to the top of that podium. Melissa Lenev, 25, fr from France. Um, her best 2014 performance was in Innsbruck uh, with fourth place finish, uh, nearly missing the podium there. And then fifth place in Munich, Germany at the World Championship. Um, was actually there live in person. Uh, that was an amazing competition and Melissa was very close to a few boulders, so she's ready. Um, we have Jan Hoyer here, male, 22, from Germany. Um, last year, he's the reigning champ from Haiyang uh, in 2014. Uh, Toronto, Canada this uh, last year is in second place as well.
Okay, so next up on the girls' stats is my fellow teammate, Shauna Coxey. She's 21 from Runcorn in Liverpool. She's having um, a kind of tricky season so far from a, from a really strong season last time. In Haiyang last year, she did come second place. Um, and she's already had a couple of the podium finishes this season. So we'll see how she goes in, in the hot conditions this, this round. And fingers crossed as well. And yet, like before I said, uh, last year here in Haiyang, she did come second overall on the podium, so we'll see if she can repeat it. Okay, up after Shauna, we have Petra Klinger, um, girl from Switzerland, super strong girl. Um, Petra is also a boxer. Um, she has had a couple of near misses this season. Last year, in uh, Toronto, she placed seventh. In Munich, she placed eighth. So she's working her way up the board. Um, this time last year in Haiyang, she came seventh. So she missed out on finals by one place. Um, I'm sure she was really disappointed, but it's good that she can come back this season and make the final. We have Akio Noguchi, 25, from Japan. Um, she is extremely strong, an absolute powerhouse. She's had a really good season so far, including last season. We have Lavelle, Haiyang, Vale and Toronto, all in first places. We also have a second in the Arco Rockmaster and third in the Munich World Championships. Um, it's safe to say that Akio is on good form. And last year in Haiyang, she did place on top. So let's see if she can repeat that result now. And lastly, to complete the women's final, we have Katerina Sauerwein from Austria. Katri's 27, she's been competing for quite a while now, she's from Innsbruck. She's had a couple of lower places than what she's normally used to last season. We had an 8th in Kayang, a 9th in Vail and a 16th in Toronto. So not uh, Katrina's normal positions. Um, she did just miss out the final last year here by two spots. So it's good that she can come back and get in the final again this year. And again, fingers crossed for her, we'll see what she can do. Okay, so that's the girls over and done with. I'm gonna pass over to Josh now and he's gonna go through the guys. Thank you, Leah. Here are the boys from left to right. Good looking crew. Really good looking crew, actually. Here we go, we have Albon Lever, um, 20 years old from France, um, with a uh, fifth place finish in Laval last year, and uh, eighth place finish in Munich at the World Championship, so just missing out of finals. But Albon's been uh, on top of his game this season with a um, opening win in Toronto this year, so he's, uh, he's on game. And, um, He's never been in Haiyang before, so this is his first time in Haiyang and his uh, first Haiyang finals. We're gonna take a look at uh, Jan Hoyer again as he looks at his boulder. He's probably really psyched about all these pinches on this route. We have Jan Hoyer, um, 22 years old from Germany. Uh, last year in Haiyang, he is the first place winner. Um, we have a uh, third and fourth place in uh, Munich and Laval as well. Um, Jan has a few first place finishes uh, this season. And um, last year as well, he did place first in Haiyang. Let's have a look who is next in our running order. 
Minoru Nakano, uh, male from uh, Japan, male 30 from Japan. Um, he uh, looks like he's made a uh, semifinals uh, two years ago in 2013, um, 11th in uh, Chongqing, China, and 15th in France. So this is a big jump for him, making finals here in Haiyang. Um, this is his first time in Haiyang. So uh, we'll see what he has. It's awesome to see a new face in finals. Our next male competitor is da -da 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 drum roll. Rustam Galvanov from Russia. He's 26 years old. Um, last year he won Laval uh, up against a bunch of French finalists. He was able to pull out a win in their home country. So. He's on top of his game last year, and this is his first time in Haiyang as well. Looks like the finalists are all done with their previews, so they're in the uh, back prepping and going over their, their roots and putting their boots on. Here we have Adam Andra, 21. Um, last year, he uh, kind of swept the field. He got three firsts and three seconds. That's not a bad record. Um, he won the climbing uh, world championship in Munich last year. Um, I believe he also won for lead. Isn't that right? He won the overall. Um, Sean won the overall. And this is his, also his first time here. A um, lot of new faces here in Haiyang. And lastly, We have Chong Jong Wong, 18 from Korea. And uh, we have a uh, couple de definitely different places. We uh, missed semifinals uh, a while ago in, in the championship, in the world championship last year, but definitely looking strong. Um, and last year in Haiyang, he, is, uh, he placed fourth, so just off the podium. But he is back this year. Um, Ready to take the gold for sure, making a final last year and podium, um, uh, podium last weekend actually, uh, which is his first podium. I'm going to hand over the mic to my great friend Leah here, and she's going to talk about uh, female one a little bit and what we can see from the camera. Here you go, Leah. Okay, so block one on for the girls. Um, I've been outside and actually had a look at some of the blocks before I came in to commentate. They do look uh, very intriguing, quite crimpy, if I do say so myself. Um, I personally don't mind a crimp, but sure with an American sat next to me, he prefers the larger size holes. I don't know, I don't know. I, I like crimps as well, but uh, we'll see what these guys can do. There's no Americans in finals, so it can be crimpy. Okay, so Miho is nearly ready to pull on. She's already seen these blocks, so both of them should pull on pretty fast. Miho goes for the double hand jump and sticks it first time. Alban looks like he's grappling with uh, some quite small holes on his block. Yeah, Alban with the um, the big jump on M1, and I was reading this route, and it looked like you needed to kick your right foot over as you jumped up to uh, where his right hand is, but he's, he's working with his feet, trying to get them on. Does It looks a little... Oh yeah, very insecure, but he's holding that swing. That was very impressive. You can see that that hold has zero in cut, which is pretty wild. Uh, Miho's um, yeah fighting through this roof here. What do you think you suppose you're supposed to do there through that great volume there? The sun is definitely beating down on that great volume, and I can say that there is not much friction on these volumes at all. That the whole that she's holding on to is very open-handed, but she doesn't seem to have any problems with a really good heel toe she has in the back. Miho is making really good progress on this block and tops it to make a flash on her first go. She'll be very, very happy with that. It's always really nice to be able to come out in a qualifier, semi-final or a final and, and flash the first block. So all eyes are on Alban. Yeah, do you think she did her own braid in her hair? Do you think someone did that for her? I think the Japanese are pretty good at doing the hair, actually. They always have these little quirky hairstyles and clips going on. I'm always quite jealous of the hair, actually. They look pretty good. 
I can braid hair, you know. I mean, that's pretty impressive for a guy. I do admit that is pretty good for a guy. <laughs> so Aban's taking it. He's chilling out on the mat. He's already had one go. I think he knows what he might need to do now. It's really hard for these competitors to actually keep calm and take their time and not rush goes. Uh, by doing that, you'll just get tired and very pumped and it's an inefficient way to do uh, a climbing competition. It's really interesting with the start too. You see the three pieces of tape on the left on the orange hole now. Um, makes it kind of an interesting start. Um, only having one, one hand out on the right on the blue volume. The setters are definitely trying to force something funky in the beginning and it uh, looks like Albo did figure it out on his first go which is pretty awesome. So here he's up for his uh, second attempt. Three, four points of contact and we'll see what he can do on this go. Oh yeah, that is a hard swing to hold. So now get the brushes to come in, try and make the hold slightly better than what it was just before his go. He has one minute left. Now the format that we're using here in the final is the same as always. It's what we call four plus. That means the climbers have four minutes to do their block. They can step off the floor before the four minute buzzer is over and they will be allowed to carry on their attempt. They will not be pulled down. Um, the next climbers, the guy and the girl, won't come out until Alban has finished his block, or his attempts on the block, should I say. I think actually the reason why he's got tape on his knees is because he partially tore his MCL in his knee. Yeah, I'm not too up to date with uh, human biology, but yeah, he has a, he has a knee injury and he's doing very well to climb how he's climbing and actually make it into a final with such an injury. So, so he can now no longer have any more goes after he's come down. So he's either going to make the top or he's not going to get the top at all. Come on, Alban. Needs to stick the slope up. This is his high point. This is where he came off last time. Oh, and he's off. So he did flash to the bonus, if I am correct. Um, which is something to take away from the block one. I don't think he'll be overly happy with it, but it's out of the way now. He needs to forget that happened. The mean looking eyes from Jan Hoyer ready to attack his first boulder. Psyched to see what Jan can do on this one. They have to wait for the um, head judge to give him the go ahead, and there it is. Jan Hoyer up, and we have Melissa Lenev on female number one. Gonna be a tough act to follow with a, uh, an, a, fa a flash from Miho on um, female one. So we'll she see what she can do. I have full confidence in Melissa though. Ale Mel, nice stick on the dyno. Jan just, oh just fumbling that right hand a little. Oh, and Melissa. Melissa took a different approach to the dyno than Miho. Instead of doubling hands to the lower sloper, she did one, two. She did kind of look a little bit tired on that flick though to the black hold. Um, maybe she'll pull it down next time and, and actually grab it, but that could be an early, early highlight of how Melissa's feeling. That was the bonus hold as well, which he wouldn't have got the point for, so. The first aim is to get hold of the bonus, and then is to get to the top hold. Yeah. Looks like we have a, a slight technical on the men's side. Um, looks like Jan actually did rip a hold off the wall, which I, I do believe. So uh, <laughs> the setters are putting a few extra screws in the starting hold. Um, We'll see. We'll see what they uh, see how quickly they can get Jan back on the wall. Melissa instructing the team of brushers to. Here we go. We we definitely have a good crew of setters here fixing the the hold. Yep, Jan is strong. Mel pulling on for a second go. Got to stick that low percentage dyno, but 
There we go. Fingertips sliding across that left volume. Pretty awesome. Alemel. You can see from the close-up shot we just had of that uh, large blue crimp hold that Mel just was holding on before she moved to the black. It is not a very good hold. And in, in this heat, those girls will be battling to stay on the wall. One advantage that Miho had over the other climbers is she gets to come out first, so she gets the cleanest conditions. The more and more people that hold on the holds and put chalk on them and sweat on them, the girls that come out later are gonna have to battle with that even more, so. Ooh. On goes the liquid chalk from Melissa. I really can't explain to you guys watching at home how hot it is here and, and how hard it is to try and keep yourself calm and your breathing controlled when you're so warm and you're trying to battle up the wall at the same time. Okay, so Melissa pulling on for her third attempt. Much more comfortably sticking that dyno now. Now, can she stick this move that's been troubling her? Yes, she can. Good effort, Melissa. So that is a bonus for her on her third attempt. She has to now grapple through the roof. These holds are very open-handed. She's just trying to figure out here which way to attack. Oh, slightly different to Miho. She's gone in for a backward shoulder. Come on, Melissa. Is that a fist? Is she fisting against the volume? Well, she's making it work by the look of it. Come on, Melissa. Come on, Melissa. She is really fighting here in the roof. She has 10 seconds left. Means she can no longer fall off and get back on. Her time is up. This is her last attempt. She's just chilling out a little bit, trying to regroup herself, trying to control her breathing. I wonder what's going through her mind right now. What am I doing? <laughs> she's probably thinking she's a little turned around right now and she uh, needs to reverse spin out of that roof. So this should be interesting to watch. Melissa is uh, a very established comp climber. She will know how to keep herself under control. It's just whether she can fight to stay on. She is a good fighter. Come on, Melissa. Come on, Melissa. She's got a foot clamp on the black, black hold on the back wall. She needs to stick in with this move now. She needs to get those feet up and in, and she's off. A valiant effort there. You can safely say she fought all the way, and I th actually thought for a second that she was going to control that. She's very good on a crimp, but um, I think she just had a little bit too much momentum there to carry on. So, we have Jan back out after the slight hold ripping off the wall. We'll see if the screws are strong enough this time for him to pull back on. Leah, do you think uh, Jan is um, phased by the technical at all? Do you think uh, he has the uh, the experience to just gather his thoughts correctly and get back on this? Jan, for me at the minute, is the ultimate comp climber. He's, he's so calm and relaxed and knows what he's good at. Um, one thing that he has not been so good at this season yet is crimps, and seems though he just pulled one off the wall, then I'm sure he can work on it, but I'm sure he's not... Sorry about that crash and bang there. We just had a slight, a slight malfunction on a chair leg. Otherwise, Jan has just made the top move and he has topped block one. Um, I'm not entirely sure what go that'll be on. Um, they might not count his first go because of the technical. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I think he's just actually discussing right now with the judges what go that they're gonna give that to him on. Um, but now that my uh, co-presenter is back with me, Josh, what just happened? I don't really want to talk about this too much, but earlier today, our uh, producer over here 
kind of broke a chair, and then he gave it to me and didn't tell me I was sitting in the half-broken chair. <laughs> And now I have a metal chair, so I'm psyched. I'm ready, uh, ready to announce more. But I'm going to hand you back over to Leah. I'd just like to come in here. I am the producer. Um, it's actually the third chair we've uh, broken here that we've been provided here in China. So incorrect there, Josh. Keep it going, guys. Nice banter. I think what he's basically trying to say is he needs to go on a diet. But there we go. <laughs> Next up we have Shauna Coxey making that first dino look look very, very easy. She's definitely taking her time being calm and collected. I'm now over my laughing fit from watching Josh collapse on the floor. All eyes on Shauna now. Oh, she just drops the bonus on her first attempt. Over on the men's block one. We have Manuru Nakano. He has easily got the bonus. He's just trying to move his weight across now to the palm, which Alban had quite easily as well. Can he make the next move and stay on? Jan also fell off this move. Very easily and very in control. Josh, what do you think of that? I think that was amazing the way he went to that sloper off that palm. Uh, so controlled and he's still hanging on this hold. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't know what Jan did there. I was still rolling around on the floor, but I think Jan might have put a foot up for that move. I'm not sure. Leah doesn't know either. She was laughing. So we'll, we'll, um, we'll see what, we'll see what Minoru has to do for the, uh, to gain that last crimp. Shona back on for a second go. Easily repeating the first move. Stick in the bonus hold this time with a left hand. Shona is battling with a finger injury this year on her left hand side, so she won't have enjoyed that move too much, but crimps for the left hand on this block are now over, so. We'll see if she gets sucked into the same way as Melissa. If there's one girl that can climb her way out of tricky, awkward positions, it's Shauna. Training with her back in the UK is definitely one of her stronger points. It's just whether she can read her way through the sequence now. Using full body strength there, she catches the move, keeps her feet on. This is a good effort from Shauna. She has one minute left. She now needs to be able to keep her feet up in the roof to not cut loose and swing, the momentum will pull her off. There we go, the same as Miho, she's got the toe clamp in the roof. And she's caught the crimp. And now she should easily move, there we go, to the top, match. Second go for Shauna Coxey. Monero back up on this move that he made look so easy before. Let's see if he still got the energy, and he does. Let's see what this beta is. Is it the high foot? Oh man, cranking on that sloper. Oh man, I'm not sure. He's got 18 seconds left. Is he gonna be able to rest and get back on the wall? He's thinking about it. He's going for another go. That's what we like to see. And back on. Yeah, just, just in time. This is his last go. We know this bowler is possible. So you have the energy. Oh, and he was just exhausted. Tuckered out. All right, our next climbers are Rustam and Petra. Getting some direction from the amazing volunteer crew here in China. And their time has started. They'll probably do a quick preview and then um, 
Hop on the wall. Rustam is already on. Rustam is a, a man of small holds and putting fingernails behind uh, small crimps, so he made that problem look no, no issue for him. Petro just making quick work of gaining that bonus already. Here goes Rustam. Is he going to go for the flash? Oh. Fell off, going for the little crimp on the volume. And Petra quickly out the roof. Man, this girl is impressing me after this these, this comp for sure in this season already. She's just cruising these with that fight. Ale, Petra. How has the season been going for her as much? I can't really remember. Um, the other previous comps, but um, you you must know you've been competing alongside with her. She has been getting into the semifinals this season. Unfortunately, uh, she hasn't made a final uh, so far. But you know, Petra's a really, really strong competitor, and every now and then she just has a, a little bit of bad luck. But today in the semifinal, she climbed really well. She topped all four blocks. Um, totally deserves to be in the final um, by a long way. We'll just see if she can uh, carry through all the four blocks. Sometimes, when I've seen her climbing before, she tends to power out a little bit towards the end, but we'll see if her current fitness can carry her through. We've got Rushdam here, still sat on the mat, contemplating what to do next. Not sure he can quite believe he fell off a crimp there, but uh, we'll see if he can redeem himself this time around. The first jump for Rushdam is a really big jump. Rushdam is a, is a very small guy and I'm quite impressed that he actually made that jump first go. Back on the finger jugs for him. Huge jump there with ease, matching much easier than anyone that we've seen on this block so far. So he knows now that he has to give it a little bit more than last time. Really good. You can see from that left hand, he's good on a crimp. If he can get his fingers over it, he's going to hold it. So I believe that was a second go for Rustam. Very good effort there. He'll be quite happy with that, I imagine. So a quick round from both Petra and Rushdam. Next up, we have Akio and Adamondra. Wow, this is a strong couple. Yeah, this is a this is going to be a good round to watch. These two, we're going to see them uh, next to each other through all the boulders through finals. So, um, don't don't go walk away from the computer for this one. hesitating slightly on the first dyno and actually doing ecstatic. If there's one thing that Akio is good at, it's being flexible. This girl is extremely flexible and uses it every time she gets on the block. Definitely has a slightly different style to the other climbers, but she stuck that bonus with ease. She's very calm and calculated. She's a really nice climber to watch. Um, very quite elegant. and not deciding not to turn around into the roof and actually making it look quite a bit easier that way as well, just going out hands first. It's in very good control here. Not phased, but in the slightest. And pulls through one arm, match on the top. That is a flash for Akio. Just so everyone knows back at home, if you haven't seen on the screen, Adamondra has fell off. Shot horror. He um, he's actually had two attempts now. So next up for Adam is his third attempt. He will know that other climbers have done it relatively quickly. So you may start to see Adam getting slightly annoyed. Ooh, 
Adam actually just kicking himself off that sloper there. He just carried a little bit too much momentum on the match. Just greased off backwards slightly. He knows that he really needs to top this first block, ideally, as other people have already. So let's see if he can if he can deal with the pressure that's on him right now. All right, let's see how Adam gets his foot over this time. He's got a minute left. Uh, a little bit more controlled this time. Much nice, much nicer. There we go, he's got bonus. Adam's capable of doing this route. Can he figure out the right way to do it within 45 seconds? Oh. Adam showing a little frustration, but also passion there. He's, de he's got plenty of time to rest up and give it one more go. Fifteen seconds left for Adam. Three seconds for Adam here. His last go. Ale Adam. He doesn't look tired. He looks uh, controlled. He is determined to do this boulder. Sometimes the pressure of your... Uh, and Adam is done with number one. Bit frustrated, but it's only the first boulder. We don't know what the others are. Uh, the other boulders are like. Um, we're about to bring out the last climbers, uh, Zhang Wang Chong, on uh, for the men's side, and Katiana for the female. Female. Kata just kind of floating over to that hole. That was that was interesting. She didn't use much momentum and uh, she just missed the bonus though. It looked like she missed the screw on a little bit. Oh man, Zhang Wang Chong is so strong. Will he flash it? Very nice. Oh just kind of fumbled the crimp a little. He knows what he's got to do now, though. Okay, so both of them just stood on the mat at the minute, just regrouping, chalking. These guys do have the worst conditions out of all the competitors. They are out last. They have a lot of chalk and sweat to deal with. Kata, when she fell off the first time, just asked the brushes to come in. Um, it did look like she, she fell off rather rapidly. I'm wondering if she actually popped off those holds rather than fell off. Okay, so Kata, nearly ready to pull back on. Jong Won also pulling back on. Oh, Kata is off again. Hmm, I wonder what's going on there. The way in which this guy climbs with ease just puts me in awe every time. And his flexibility, look at that high step. In 
very good control over to the crimp and he's happy to top first block. That's a good effort from John Wan right there. It was impressive to see him in the semifinal round earlier today uh, with I believe three flashes, um, which is a hard feat to do in these uh, in these bouldering comps and especially in the semifinal round where the difficulty gets turned up. So he's on his game today and we'll see if he can continue to pull through and Katya on in that hard move to bonus. It looks like she's just kind of, to me, pushing maybe a little too much. I don't know what you think. I think a couple of the girls have actually gone up to the bonus hold uh, quite fast and had to hold quite a hard looking swing. I think uh, Katarina is just not quite getting over the top of the uh, crimp on the bonus hold, which is hard to see from this cam camera angle, but there is a crimp on that black hold. Again, the, the blue hold that she's uh, that she's falling off is really isn't a very good hold at all. There's not much of a lip on it. And that left foot's quite high, so all of her center of gravity is actually being forced out backwards, which uh, which you can see, which you can see is happening when she's actually firing up for the bonus hold. So she has got 20 seconds left, so I can imagine that this next go will be her last. She really needs to psych herself up here and uh, and try, I'm sure she's trying really hard to stay on, but this this is literally her last go on this block. Come on, Katy. And there, oh, very, very close to holding that. I think that was definitely last go psych that got her there, but that wasn't enough. She will not be given that bonus point. That was not a holding control. So, block one for men and women is complete. The competitors will now move on to block two and we go back to the start. So for the women, next out is Miho. And for the guys, next out is Alban. Now that we've seen the first block, uh, what do you think about them, Josh? Uh, I thought for the, uh, the girls, it was um, really uh, jumpy and powerful, which was cool to see right off the bat for the girls. Um, I think there was uh, definitely some technique involved in the roof with keeping your feet um, on. With uh, and Melissa was uh, not there with the with the feet and the uh, toe hooks, but um, I thought that was a good all-around boulder. And the guys was good. There was a lot of um, diversity in that route for sure. Um, different hold styles. Here's Albo on M2. It's cool to to watch the first climber go out because you kind of see these holds in the wall and you have no idea how the moves are coming out or is supposed to uh, to play out. So here goes Albo. Oh, that's amazing. Knee scum and that left hand. Wow, what is he holding on to on that left hand? Oh, he's got a little screw on there. Okay. So he's holding an incredibly small crimp with his right hand. He's managed to work his way up into the triangle volume into another incredibly slopey volume. The setters have really gone for condition dependent holds here and can he make this into a flash? He's got one hand on, he does need to match. The footholds are minimal and yes, he makes the match. That is a flash for Alban, well done. We can see in the background that Miho has just fallen off and I think if I'm correct, that, that is her third attempt. Again, I went out to look at this block earlier. Um, if you don't like crimps, this is a really bad block for you. It is all based on crimps and actually quite big dynamic moves between them. You get a token sloper just here, which Miho can't quite stick the first move on. She's taking her time trying to work things out a little bit. A little rule that might be interesting for the viewers at home to know is that uh, bolt holes in the wall or any volumes are not allowed to be used for hands, or fingers, should I say. So, another dino. Miho sticks the first move. She's moving away through this crimp. She looks very at home on small holds. Again, showing how good the Japanese are at being flexible. Moi is very jealous in... Uh, in isolation, warming up with these girls, how flexible they really are. Just a maximum stretch there. 
reach up. She looks slightly wrong-handed. She then needs to try and swap those hands over or get those feet up so she can go over to the next one. And she's made the match. Oh, that was a very good effort from Miho there. I think she used a lot of energy to get that high. She looks like she's breathing pretty heavy, but she does have a minute left to recover and step off the floor. My guess would be that she will actually rest for the majority of the time. Just being checked there by the Austrian physio, if she's okay. That's the really nice thing at these competitions, that like everyone clubs together, everyone's really friendly, and we all try and support each other. Um, even if you are from a different team or a different country, we just want to make sure that you're all right. She's given the nod there that she is okay and that um, she hasn't hurt her fingers or anything on the crimp, so. I think she'll just spend the last 30 seconds or so just having a rest, controlling the breathing. Ooh. She's getting on quite early. Here we go, can she stick it? No, she can't. Do you think she's doing it right, Josh? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, judging from uh, being out here, um, it's it's hard to tell. You can only read, read a sequence so much until you get on the wall and then you actually feel the body position and the difference. Um, I think she's doing it right. There, it did look a little funky where she was matching. That's her last go and she's off. Time's out. She looks extremely exhausted there, but she did flash number one and she did gain bonus on number two. So. Not too bad for Miho. She's gonna go back and I'm sure de-pump and really try to get her energy ready for, for problem three. Next out as the brushers uh, clean up some, some sweat from the previous uh, competitors, we have Melissa Lenev on two and Jan. Stepping up to rip off some more holds on number two for the men. This should be a Jan Boulder. Uh, he is really enjoying these. Uh, this is a Jan Hoyer style boulder if they were going to set one for him. So we'll see how he goes about it. It's all about root reading too at a certain point, even if it is your style. And his right foot popped there. So that's going to be uh, probably just add some. Here goes Jan's second attempt. See if he can get those feet working better. And woo, it really looks like he wants his right hand on that screw on jib on the, the volume. I believe that's what Album did, isn't it? So I think Melissa's actually having two or three goes here now. I think she's finding the first move quite hard. Um, she keeps slipping off the first sloper with the dyno. Jan, being one of the bigger competitors, I think finds it quite hard sometimes when he needs to get bunched up. Um, having that much weight behind him, he needs to be all the more powerful, which he is, but sometimes it can it can really play against him. And he can fall off in places you don't really expect him to fall off. We'll see if he can hold it together this time. His feet being so low, and the, the volume being a really bad foothold, it being vertical. We'll see if he can pull it together this time. He really needs uh, he needs to push up into that undercut and he just cannot get the weight on his feet without them popping. Melissa holding the first dino on, on F2 there. Really well done. Come on, Melissa. She's gonna make her way up through these crimps now. Now, can she work her way through uh, what Miho was having trouble with? It, she looks like she's gonna go left-handed. There we go. Nope, doesn't like that. She's gonna bring her right heel up. Sit on there. She's probably going to roll over now, right hand. No, she's going to. Oh. Come on, Melissa. That hold looks really bad. L looks like she can't really get any weight on that hand at the minute. She needs to try and roll over and, and get that body weight way over to the left. Oh, very dirty match on that bonus hold. She's pulled it in. Melissa is strong on the crimp. She can keep it in. 
she's got a very strong chance of uh, of moving up. She's gone for the pop there. She must be confident on these crimps. One more move. Get the match, and she has topped. She'll be very relieved to top block two after having not topped block one. She's definitely got her head back in the game. Meanwhile, on the other hand, Jan, still on the floor. He has had another two attempts since we just saw Melissa top out. Doesn't look like he's having a nightmare here. We'll see if he can work something out or pray to the rubber gods that his uh, his feet won't pop anymore. There's rubber gods, right? Do you not pray to rubber gods? I pray to rubber gods, yeah, especially on slab or in this situation with Jan when there really isn't a foot. It's just uh, compression or opposition with your feet. It's definitely a challenge. Albo didn't have a problem with it. That must be the French, uh, the French technique there. But let's see if the, the German power can get through it. And Jan with the no-go on number two. Okay, so next up we have Great Britain's Shauna Coxie and Japan's Minoru Nakano. The beeper did go then, so um, our climbers are turned around, but they're being made to, to face the audience again. I think we might just be having a slight clock malfunction. Sean is not quite too sure why she's not allowed to turn around, but she will have to wait until an official allows her to climb. Hmm. I think now she can see how many people are looking at her. Do you think she's looking for you right now? <laughs> she might be wondering why I'm not shouting all that much, but uh, but yeah, she doesn't need me to shout for her. She knows exactly what she's doing. And there we go, we have it. She's just making sure that we are allowed to turn. No. Okay. Sean is just checking that the time has started and I believe that it hasn't. The competitors will have to go back inside until they can get the clock error corrected. This isn't really what you want as a competitor. It's kind of slightly mentally disturbing when someone tells you to climb and then tells you to not. Um, but again, that is just something that you have to deal with and adapt to situations that happen. Absolutely, yeah, the more experience, the better, and the more you go to these comps, uh, you realize that um, not all comps can run perfectly, and there are technical difficulties here and there. No offense to our producer here, it's not his fault at all. He doesn't run the clock. He's, uh, he's just back here breaking chairs with me. Yeah, I, I, I wonder what is going on right now. Uh, everyone is kind of just hanging out. The clock is cool. The, cl the clock is cool right now. All right. And here we go. Round attempt two for these guys. This is clock attempt two for these guys. So it's their first attempts on the boulder. Shona looking at what she's up against. I'm sure she's thinking of her finger slightly here, but we'll see if she can stick the first move to start off with. Not kind of committing as well as some of the other girls have been doing. She looked slightly tentative there. Yeah, it looks like she was going at the um, the, the safety, the, the safest way to do that, that boulder, some more static and uh, I was curious, I was wondering, do you think you could get a toe hook on the right crimp, or do you think it's just too small to do that so you can cross your right hand over? I actually think the the right crimp is a lot higher than the left hand, and uh, I think if you if you try and pull up and put a, a heel or a toe on, that you, your bum will be sticking really far out. Um, I'm sure it seems that all these girls seem to be doing it the same way. Um, Shona just, just needs to go a little bit quicker there. I'm wondering if she can't quite generate enough power off that left-hand crimp to fire her over to the hold with two hands. 
We'll see how she gets on. Meanwhile, Minoru has fallen off. Um, Alban just seemed to definitely path his way up this climb. We, I didn't think it would be much of a problem, but yes, and Shona has held the first move on women's two. So now she does need to battle up with these crimps. Ideally, she needs to do it this go so that she can give her finger a rest. I wonder if she'll see the same way that Melissa's done it. She'll definitely be favoring the right hand here. That is a big reach off there. She needs to go quite a lot higher and she's held it. That left foot very, doesn't look very good to hold on at all, but she has moved through the move. Can she make it through to the top? She's got a slight knee scum on the volume and off she goes with the match. Very good effort, Shauna. And she's not happy. That was very, very impressive by Shauna, mainly because as we know, she has a left finger injury that she's nursing. And, and uh, we have Minoru up here, um, topping out men's number two at the second top that we've seen. Um, let's make sure that it looks like the judges are saying no to that top. He actually didn't control it. We were kind of squinting a little in here as he dropped down. But yeah, the um, IFSC rules are two-hand control for three seconds um, until the judge waves their, uh, their, their flag or their clipboard saying it's good. So he did not get that go-ahead, and he has to rest up. So I think we are going to try and pull a replay up of his attempt there just so we can actually explain to you guys what we mean by tapping the top hold. Um, technically, he didn't hold it for three seconds in control. And here we go with the replay now. So you see his right hand come in and he'll repeatedly tap the top hold. So he hasn't held the top hold with both hands for three seconds. And I guess him being a slightly more inexperienced climber than the rest of the field, he'll just be so psyched that he got to the top of the block and feeling like he's held it in control, and actually he hasn't. So hopefully that'll be a big lesson for him there. And fingers crossed he can get up there again and actually get the points. That'll be a really sad thing to see if he doesn't, but he needs to understand that that, that is how you finished, how you, how you finish a block. He's got this far, he's done all of qualifiers and semi-finals, so he needs to get his mind back in the game. He's matched many boulders to get here, so he just needs to do this one boulder and uh Hopefully he's got the power and energy to do it. I think he's got the anger and determination. Let's hope that he has the, uh, the power. Yeah, he's got the look. Okay, so we really need his feet to work from here and to stay on the wall. He's looking slightly tired. I'm sure he's got enough to pull through. Okay, so getting his feet up there where Jan couldn't. Oh, and power down. He's going to be really, really disappointed with that. He'll know in himself that he's done the block, but he will not get the points for that score. He's going to have to try really hard now to go back into isolation and wipe that from his memory and carry on the competition as if that didn't happen. Um, yeah, he, um, he, did, he did get bonus on that, so that is something that uh, Jan did not get bonus, but Jan did the first boulder. Um, where uh, Minoru did not. So we'll see how that, um, if that bonus plays out and if uh, Minoru can maybe flash another boulder and put him back in the game. Uh, we have our um, third climbers out, uh, Rustam and Petra. Uh, they're eyeing up their boulders one more time, refresh their memory on the moves and uh, hopping on. Rushdan pulling straight on there with no hesitation. He will remember this block from observation. He knows exactly what he has to do. It's pretty straightforward. Petra nearly holding the first dino there. She just slipped off the volume. Looks like she kind of stroked it in a way, the way she, that she fell off. Rushdan finding the first move on this hard, the first move hard on this as well. It looks like a long way. Yeah, the, um, the opening moves of, of um, all the bowlers have been quite tricky so far, especially the number two for um, female and male here. 
Um, yeah, the, the feet are just not that great for you. On, um, as it, it looks like a big hold, but the texture on those volumes aren't as uh, good as you want them to be, and it is a big sloper, so it's hard to keep your feet on and roll over it. And Petra is, uh, she's looking psyched though. She's, she's bouncing back and taking deep breaths. Rustam just came up short on the, um, that piggyback hold that's on the, uh, the second volume there. The little white discs, that's what we call them in America, piggyback holds. I'm sure you have a different name for them. Screw ones. Yeah, ours is cooler, piggybacks. Petra still finding that move slightly hard. She is, she's still smiling. You can give her that. She's definitely a happy climber. Talking of the faces uh, from the competitors, um, there has actually been a book published called Beyond the Face um, by Heiko, who is uh, the Austrian team manager. Um, I would highly recommend this book if you are into competition climbing and into following the climbers that are on the circuit. It is a, quite an inspiring book full of, full of portraits from the climbers that are competing and also action shots. Uh, you can get this from beyondtheface.com. Um, and yeah, any any birthdays or Christmases coming up, definitely get that one booked in. Uh, Petra has stuck the first dino on women's two. She now oh, she now needs to make her way back through these crimps as everyone else has done. She's got a double knee. Pinch? Knee pinch? Is that what we can call it? Like a knee clamp? Oh, just just looking like she's powering out there slightly. Uh, whereas the other girls have been getting their heel on and actually sitting on the foot. She um, she decided to attempt to sit on it just with her knees. Didn't really look like the best way. You said Petra was a boxer too before, didn't you? Yeah, um, if I'm not mistaken, Petra is, uh, or has been, I'm not sure if she is the current, but she's been Swiss boxing champion. Um, might say something slightly about the build of this girl. She's definitely, power is her forte. She's very strong in the upper body. Um, and we'll see if she can make that work to our advantage on these blocks. Running back there, she has three seconds to get back on. This is her last go. And just slipping off the top of the sloper there. She definitely gave that a roll. Rustam's struggling there with the first move of this block. He's also out. Um, you can see him slightly shaking the head there. He won't be quite happy with himself for that one, but I guess it's kind of frustrating sometimes when you look at a block and think you can do it, and then actually don't really get off the floor. Yeah, especially a, a block that you think you can do, and it, it looks like it's your style as well. It's... Um I think that's a, a Rustam boulder, all, all um, definitely weird, cr definitely crimpy with those uh, with those screw-on jibs on that volume there. Um, so yeah, big surprise that Rustam did not um, gain bonus or, or pass the second hold there. Um, but up next we have Adam Andra and Akio Noguchi. This is the uh, the power team to watch here. Although you say that, Adam has not topped block one. So, can he redeem himself on block two? Meanwhile, Akio with the flash on block one. She'll know that there has been tops on block two. She will ideally, obviously, want to flash it. Who doesn't? But my money is Akio is going to go with the toe hook, right toe hook. Akio's going to jump. She kind of did neither, really. She went for a slightly dynamic rollover. However, on the men's side, Adam climbing smoothly through the lower section, holding the campus to the penultimate hold. That was a very impressive move. This boy can hold holds that I didn't really think are possible. 
And there we go with the match. He definitely held that in control. The judge put up the hand to indicate that he has got the points. Wave to the crowd and job done. I feel like that bowler uh, suits Adam very well more than some of the others that didn't do the bowler. Adam's a very, look at this. My money's on Akio doing the right toke and boom. Yes. Okay, fair play. I'll give you that one. And uh, as I was saying about Adam, um, that, that boulder looked like a, a very outdoor style technical climbing um, boulder. So I think that just Adam looked at it and he knew exactly what to do with his hips and his feet and he, uh, he made it work, which was very impressive. Uh, here goes Zakio Noguchi on the top. She's got to figure out how to either match this like Shauna or uh, drop back down. Looks like she's going for the match. Oh wow, she is very flexible. Oh, she is in an interesting position here. Let's. I don't think that holds matchable. I actually wonder what the root setters think here because somewhere along the way, it kind of looks like you're going to have to match a really horrible hold. Oh. Okay, she's actually just asking if she can use a hold on oh an an adjacent problem. So. We have a top from Akio Noguchi, very well done. She has been allowed to use a volume which is on a different problem and that is because there is no black tape. I'm not sure if the root setters might have underestimated this girl's flexibility, but, um, but she just made that work and fair play to her for thinking, for thinking the way that she climbs the strongest. Yeah, you can. Uh, that's that shows the experience level that she's at, and also the strength that she was just able to hold on to those holds that you've seen many girls fall off of. And uh, look to the judges and ask them if it's okay that she can go off route, or well, not off route, on route, um, and finish the boulder. So that's uh, experience and strength uh, at its finest. And our um, last two climbers are up for the second boulders: Zhang Wang Chong and uh, Katarina. I like saying that, Katarina. She's European. <laughs> Katy, Kata, Katarina. I think she has lots of uh, nicknames from fellow competitors and teammates. But I think to the rest of the world watching, her name is Katarina. So we're just having a few dodgy seconds with the clock. Um, just to let you all know that we're ready right here. <laughs> you can see back there uh, Eddie Folk from the Circuit Climbing Magazine. He's the uh, official IFSC photographer, um, taking photos, doing his thing. Uh, yeah, Eddie's been here. He's been uh, been here for the the last comp in uh, Chongqing and here in Haiyang and. Earlier today for speed finals, he was actually up in a fire truck lift taking photos of speed in the in the right out in the sun. Uh, so that was pretty impressive that he was just got up there to get the good angle. So this guy's out there for the good job, and uh, he's still a little confused too with the with the time clock. This isn't really what any uh, competition organizer wants, but. That is technology in the world we live in today, and unfortunately, it doesn't always run perfectly. Um, however, the clock is a very important part of this competition, and so we will need to wait until it's um, until it's fully working. Can we do a selfie right now while we're waiting? All right, selfie time. Everyone, check uh, Instagram later for this. IFSC, boom. Okay, we have a clock. Okay, so we don't have an online clock at the minute, but the climbers are climbing, so they have been given the go-ahead from the IFSC official. Um, we have actually just been informed that we are manual timing until we can get the clock uh, back under control. Katarina just falling off the first move there. Zhang Wang delicately making his way up these up these horrendous slopey volumes. He's making light work of this hold. Ooh, he does miss the dead point, but he manages to hold it. His foot was extremely close to going over the black tape then. 
he was lucky to uh, to not fully go past it. He would have been called down if that had happened. Um, I believe that was a flash for Zhang Wang. Katarina back on. She has stuck the dino. Um, I believe this is her second go. She did ask the the brushes to brush. Um, I think she may have had some some greasy, sweaty conditions to come out to. So that's been corrected, and she has moved past that move. So you see her fighting hard to stay on the wall here. Can she make that? Oh, she can't quite make that crimp. This is the move where some girls have matched the crimp. Other girls have done the move that she just tried and, and that she did it. So she'll now try and decide what the best course of action is. Will she think to look out left where Akio has been if she sticks the move or will she go the same way as the others? I think she would. Uh, she's experienced. She's, uh, she's got a good head on her shoulders. So she's asking the judges for the time because it is now uh, manual. But you can see now the scores just popped up. We have Akio in uh, first with two tops with three attempts and Shauna pretty close behind with two and five. Um, if Katiana can do this in uh, a couple more goes, she'll be definitely in the top three. We'll also just have a look at the men's uh, scores as they stand at the minute. They will be provisional scores just while Katarina is having a rest. So standing on top, we do have John Wom has had a really strong performance so far and he is the only competitor to have topped two blocks. He would have been up there also with Minoru um, having topped the second block if, uh, if Minoru had have controlled the top. Unfortunately, he didn't. So, um, so there I have just had an update on the time. It is approximately one minute left for Katarina. Minura really needed that match on the top hold to actually stay up from the bottom of the leaderboard. Um, he definitely is going to be annoyed about that. Brushes hard at work. One of the rules in the IFSC is that climbers are not allowed to use their own brushes, which is why brushes will run into shot and clean the holds for the climbers really struggling to stick that first move again it looks really powerful she's done a lot of climbing since then as well so i think her reserves are going to be dwindling she looks determined she has got 10 seconds to get off the floor this will be her last go and there we are we are finished with block two Okay, so starting again from the from the beginning on block three, we have Alban and Miho. Um, you will notice that we do have uh, extra pads on top of the mats. Um, the landing mats for this competition are particularly soft, which is good, but there are also a couple of um, gaps in the mats as well where there are creases where the pieces of foam underneath lie and so we've just put the extra pads on top there for safety just so we don't get any rolled ankles in gaps um, so yeah let's make sure that no one no one does hurt themselves on the mats today both of them off the floor oh commentators curse Alban has just popped off Miho tentatively making her way up this block She's just trying to figure out what to do here. This definitely looks quite a delicate climb. Not as thuggy as the ones that we've just seen. No, it's really good to see a different style now for the girls with um, with more technical, like the, the beginning's uh, mantle. Wow. Apparently uh, Japan does their yoga classes because Akio and Miho are, are very flexible with the far stem out there. Curious to see what she does out of this position here. Trying to get her feet up. Yeah, she needs to get her foot maybe on top of where her hand is. We will soon find out. Come on. 
Oh, yes. Wow. Uh, this is my favorite part of the comps is when the first climbers come out and uh, show you what the roots really, really come down to. And uh, it's cool to see these guys uh, figuring it out. And it's also fun to see them evolve as each climber comes through with different styles and their different methods of doing the boulders. Um, they all, the boulders don't get done the same way every time. Looks like this first move for uh, M3 for Album is uh, pretty tricky. It looks like you need to go out with your right hand to the crimp and then maybe flip your left hand to, uh, to hold the swing. We'll see what he does. Yeah, as you can see um, from this angle here at the left side of the, uh, the screen where Album is grabbing right now, the start holds are very, very bad. Um, when you see really, really big feet, uh, you know the hands are going to be bad, especially when you're in finals on M3. So it's, uh, it's a, I'm sure it's a struggle to even pull on. We got Miho even going more stretchy than she was before. She must be doing more yoga classes. Come on, Miho. That's a crazy foot dyno. Amazing. I think she actually heel hooked her fingers, but wasn't really phased by it. She's still pushing through. Amazing work by Miho here. She's uh, reached bonus, and it looks like she's doing some uh, old school tri climbing here. Uh, what do you think about that? A move for the Brits right there. Good old hand jam. Brits love a good hand jam. Miho is, uh, Miho's, she's doing all right with the jam, actually. She's getting there. It kind of looks, oh, again, I should stop saying that. Commentator's curse. Fortunately, she did just pop off. It looks like she needed to try and get her right foot up into the scoop to, uh, to start to actually bring the hand jam out and move into a layback on the gray volume. Alban's really struggling with this first move. Must be really hard mentally to be able to push through time and time again when you know you can't do the first move. Yeah, definitely, especially with um, the holes uh, progressively getting worse and you're getting more hot, your temperature's going up. Uh, yeah, but he's he's got, well, he's got 10 seconds here, so this looks like it's about as, uh, approximately 10 seconds here, so we'll see. Um, sometimes that last go is your best go. Here he goes. And we could hear the announcer in the back uh, counting down, so that will be Album's last go. And Miho going for the uh she's gonna get a nice rest here it looks like i would for sure need a rest there the root setters uh, usually try not to set climbs with very good resting points just because of cases like this where you can step off the floor and have your last go and take as long as you need um she will stay there until she feels good enough to carry on unfortunately for miho she has not brought her chalk back with her so if she does need to chalk up she cannot Let's see if she can repeat what she did before. So last time she kicked her foot up and rocked over at the same time. Very good coordination from this girl. She has repeated it. Very well done. She needs to make sure she does not go over that black tape with her right foot. She needs to keep within the boundaries. Oh, down she goes. Looks like she's hurting a little bit from her sides. She hasn't got a smiley face right now so I think that was quite a contorted position for her to be in I'm sure she'll go back and have a good stretch and so next waiting to come out we have Melissa and Jan Melissa having topped block two hopefully she'll be on positive thinking form for block three and power up it Jan Generally, particularly quite liking, open-handed, bad slopey holds. We'll see how he gets on with this first move. Fingers crossed for the clock, and it is working. Okay, on he gets. 
very light work of that first move. Height definitely helping him there. He can he can reach he can reach that left hand hold with his feet low, and Alban was definitely not in that position. Again, Jan has come off a crimp. It definitely hasn't been his strong point this season at all. He had a hard time in this competition with crimps in the earlier rounds, but he's managed to battle his way through and get this far. Same thing in uh, Chongqing with Jan. The um, boulder number three was a very, very crimpy boulder with zero feet. Um, and it was the boulder that Jan needed to do to seal the deal and uh, just couldn't do it. So, yeah, everyone has their styles and their methods. So, um, you know, it's, I'm sure it's something that he's aware of and he uh, maybe tries to think out of the box to get around those, those issues. That's what I do, at least. So Melissa just trying to work her way through here, trying to work out what to do. Again, if you've climbed on these volumes in your local gym, you'll know that they're not amazing. And these have been set on a, this particular wall is overhanging, so it's even, even worse a hold. Um, add the conditions on top of that, the heat, the humidity. This really isn't easy for these guys out there. And this block really testing the girls' flexibility. Alyssa just reaching out there. She looks like she does need to get her right foot on top of the purple volume to give herself a little bit of leeway. She's trying to release the left foot. Oh, her full body shaking. Just trying to keep tension there. I have noticed that Melissa is a little bit of a shaker when it comes to uh, kind of full body stretches, but she sometimes seems to wobble her way up and, and stick with it. Yeah, uh, you know, some climbers, there's, uh, oh, there's Jan just, I mean, he is, he is cruising off that pinch. He just, I think he needs to uh, maybe focus on pulling with that left hand more as he goes up to that right crimp that nobody really wants to ever grab. Uh, we got Mel just like, just going all crazy with her shoulders and her arms. She's smearing on the wall now. She's doing toe hooks and standing on her fingers. She's fighting her way up this block. That was super impressive by Melissa. Wow. I want to see the expression on her face. I wish we had a camera in that corner right there. Can we get to uh, the uh, T-nut angle, please? Amazing. Melissa with uh, roughly a minute on the clock. She could get a little shake if she can push into this corner a little bit. And as we saw her, even on Boulder 1, she was fighting into that corner. And it's uh, really awesome to see the fight. This is why we're here to, to get a show. And they're here to, to try hard. Look at the... The face on Melissa, I know that face. She is just tired and kind of probably can't believe she got into that corner there. She was probably closing her eyes through some of those moves there. She definitely fought hard to stay on the wall there. Now she's going to do everything she can to regain. She knows she doesn't have long on the clock, so she either needs to go to the top or not fall off after time. It's definitely a battle that competitors uh, have when they're halfway up the wall in, in a rest. Jan still not being able to stick that crimp. Okay, so this is Melissa's last go, and she, hearing those beeps, she will now know that it's top or nothing. Yeah, it just it looked weird. Jan um, had about 10 seconds on the clock, and. Yeah, it kind of looked like, um, again, Jan um, used his mighty Hulk hands and uh, looked like he peeled the hold off the wall. So uh, Jan's going to get maybe 10 seconds on the clock to come back out and uh, see if he can rip the hold off again. It's amazing. Those setters are uh, now just adding a few screws uh, as Melissa is just kind of hanging out. Um, Looking at some uh, wall features to use here. There's a foothold under one of her feet. I'm not really sure which one it's on. There it is. Yeah, she's just hanging out, just getting uh, getting a feel for what the uh, yeah they yeah yeah she's she's trying to to look at the the next sequence here. She definitely has time. Um, and this is again one of those boulders that you're not really sure what to do until you're in that position. You have uh, somewhat of an idea, but um, maybe she didn't 
plan on this pos body positioning here, but um, as you can see along the edge of the wall too, there's um, some bolts near her uh, right knee there um, that you could also step on if you need to. They are, they are in if you need them. So we'll see what Melissa can do here. Even though she looks like she's in a pretty good rest, being so uh, deep into that squat there, it's actually going to be tiring her legs out very much. You just saw she tried to make a move upwards um, and her legs just started to shake instead. So we'll see um, We'll see if she can actually recover in this position and, uh, and not tire herself out too much. Looks like she's got sucked in a little bit to this position. She needs to make sure she does not go over the black tape. She's stood on a bolt. She's allowed to stand on that bolt because it's the same color as the wall. She is making good progress here. Extremely close to the black line. So now she's gonna have to try and work out how to turn around from this position. And you can see just above her, she's on the bonus hold now. She has one more hold to go before she's at the top, but she needs to turn this around. Again, stood on the bolt with her left foot. They are covered in paint. They are not uh, very uh, sticky. She needs to try and turn this around and get a foot in that blue scoop. Come on, Melissa. She's got a good fight going on here. And there's everything to say that she can do it. She's trying to get a knee bar in the back. She now needs to release the left foot and the right foot needs to go in the blue scoop. She's getting there. She's got a knee in. She needs to bring that left foot down. Okay, good. What a wrestling match. Can she on, Can she keep in control? That that top hold is really bad. She's just got a Oh, oh damn. She had she had a good shoulder press on that last hold, but she did not have enough to stand it up and and match. That was a really powerful top move for the setters to put on that block of the girls. That was a really good effort for Melissa. She hung in there for a very long time. She definitely deserves a clap for that. I'm sure the competitors in isolation are going to be wondering what's going on. Yeah, I'm sure they're wondering, um, boy, it's taking Melissa a long time out there. She must be uh, chilling out in the corner. But uh, yeah, I mean, that was yeah, that was amazing. I think maybe the competitors will know that um, you can have a STEM rest now and they might bring some chalk with them. So uh, we'll, we'll see what they choose to do. I don't know about you, Josh, but I tend to either just take my, uh, my like, sort of strap chalk bag and wear it or I actually bring a bucket and a strap chalk bag. What's your preference? I uh, usually wear the um, chalk bag around my waist and then I bring the chalk pot with me and if I look at the route and think I have a chance of chalking up, whether it's a slab or uh, maybe there's a big dino with a jug, I'll, I'll uh, leave the bag on. But most of the time I'll just pop it off and leave it on the floor. Okay, so right now I think we're waiting for Jan to come back out. There he is. We'll also wait for confirmation on how much time Jan actually has. I think if I'm going to guess, he'll probably have enough time for one more go. Uh, he was very, he was very low on time anyway, and uh, with a technical like that, with his second technical of uh, of the final. We'll see if he can pull it together again mentally put it behind him that he has ripped the holds off the wall twice and yeah try and try and do the block I mean if you look at Jan's biceps they're about as long as his forearms so that's why he's spinning so many holds it's not anything to do with weight it's just pure strength there So it looks like on the clock we have one minute 40 left for Jan Hoyer. I think um, with the technical you do get potentially two minutes to pull back on. With the technical that Shauna had in Chongqing, she broke a foothold, she had two minutes to carry on. So, ooh, that was a very good camera angle there. We can see how small that crimp is on the right hand for men's three. Can he stick this move? No, he cannot. 
he kind of looked a little bit top heavy there. His body came really far away from the wall and the hold that he's going to looks even smaller than, than the first crimp. Yeah, I can't imagine what that crimp actually is because, I mean, yes, Jan's weaknesses are crimps, but he also can hold bad crimps and pull on them. And he is constantly grabbing that hold and not being able to um, stay on it. So that just goes to show you that that is a bad hold. So it'll be interesting to see if Jan can muster up the energy and do it. Jan stepping on with 18 seconds left. This could be his last go if he gets high. Oh, Jan. He's going to muster up one more go. And Jan is off on men three um, with good progress, but no go for M3 or M2 for Jan Hoyer. Up next, we have Shona Coxie and Minoru stepping up. Minoru is probably um, going to be very focused on his uh, technical side of things and, and uh, the rules of the game on this round. As his last round was. Um, uh, sad to see for sure he um, finished the boulder but didn't match the finishing hold so he's back for redemption for sure and uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, what Shauna does on this uh, female three boulder um, what do you think uh, Shauna's going to do you climb with Shauna a lot um, and Leah do you think that she is uh, I don't know what do you think she's going to do in this corner do you think she's going to do what Melissa did uh, I don't know Again, I definitely think um, one of Shauna's strong points is, is moving her way through the boulders, whether it be normal climbing holds or actually big volumes. Um, I think she's quite good at sort of finding a way and sticking with it and fighting with it. I think she'll do a, a bit of a mix of what Miho did and what Melissa did. I think she will have a bit of a rest, just to give those shoulders a bit of a rest in this quite strenuous move here. But then I think she'll move up into the gray volume and um, in, in an ideal world, match it with ease and then start to make up to the final move. I definitely say this was um, one of sort of one of Shauna's style. Maybe we just see if she can figure out this turnaround move. There we go, she's in. She's on the bonus. She has bought the chalk bag with her, first competitor. Minoru making his way up, latching the crimp with ease that Jan could not do. Definitely a very different body type to Jan as well. He's made a very hard looking move into an undercut crimp. Pulling that crimp into a full crimp, he looks locked in there. And I do believe that was a foot pop that just brought him down. Yeah, the setters chose wisely for that um, left hand pinch, which he is a dual text hold, so he ended up putting his right foot on there, with, uh, which is obviously what the setters didn't want you to do. Um, and his foot popped off as he made the next move, so um, touche on the setting there. You can also see Shauna there as well, deciding on which way she was going to do uh, the move up onto the top of the bonus hold. Unfortunately, it looked like her body just came out slightly too much as she tried to hold the sloper on top with the left hand. We'll see if she decides if that's the right way and she's going to try again or if she'll go for something different. So both of them just trying to figure out what to do here. I think for the guys it's pretty straightforward. This is a block of get on and pull as hard as possible. We can see here the crimp and the bonus hold. They both look not very good holds, Josh. No, not at all. I can see why Jan was not psyched to grab that crimp, but uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, interesting to see this guy 
pull on again and work his feet up to see how he's going to um, pull off of that that uh, that undercling terrible bonus hold. So both of them pulling back on for another go. Minoru now struggling with that first move. The holds will be deteriorating even as he's having a go on them. So all these fingers as well, I think uh, those crimps are small and every time you pull on, your fingers do start to ache and hurt. So you do need to limit your goes as to as to what your body can take. Shauna knows that she can now have a bit of a better rest. This is her last go. That's why she was stood on the mat for so long because she can get into this corner now and just have a breather. Minoru fighting hard to stay on. He's doing very well. Can he hold the crimp? Yes, he can. Now he really needs his feet to work with him here so he can catch his bonus. So back to his high point before, he needs his feet to stay on, locking the crimp into a full crimp. Up with very good control. Oh, bit of a bad fall there. Very disappointing for him to drop the last hold. This guy's done a lot of climbing today and hasn't got the points to prove it. Shona struggling with the uh, with the sloper there. She knows that no one's topped it so far. I don't think she'll be um, too bummed that she didn't do that one. Obviously, she'll want to do it, but knowing that some climbers before her haven't always makes you feel a little bit better. We'll see what Petra can do on this quite burly problem. This should suit her pretty well, actually, and we'll see how Rushdam gets on on the crimps. First move there for Rushdam, looking very stretched out and big. He's one of the smaller competitors in the field. He definitely, um, he definitely tends to struggle slightly when the feet are quite low. He has to use full body tension to be able to, be able to span in between these holds. Then again, he can fit himself into small, very small shapes that the taller climbers can't. So my motto always is you've got to use what you've got. Petra making her way into the groove now. Spotted that she needs to get that foot up there. She has got a foot jam in the back between the volume and the wall. I'd be slightly nervous right now, but she's got it out, good. Sliding the foot down onto the hold. There we go, she's on. Interesting that she's gone up. That was the first competitor we've seen that tried to go up right-handed. Looks like she could make this work for her. She's now into position that Melissa was after a very long rest in the groove. You can see her muscles working to keep her on. She can get away over her right foot now, keep in control. She needs to grapple with this top volume. This is not a good hold she's going to, guys. She knows it's not. She just needs to get some control and match. And she's in. A flash! For Petra Klinger, she is very happy with that. I don't think she can quite believe that that just happened. Huge smile on her face. Petra deserved that totally. That was really, really strong climbing from the Swiss girl there. So it definitely looks like we need to get a right hand up and over the top of that hold. Rush down back on. It's uh, surprising to see Rustam uh, struggling with this opening move here. I think he's um, really just got to buckle down and, and tell himself there's only one way to do this and, and go for it. Rustam is uh, taking a little chill time right now. Very good. Rustam sticks the hold. 
Very nice. Very strong by Rustam. Taking down the crimp. Very good. Here is your root, Rustam. Is he going to heal? Very good. That was amazing. It looked like he was just about to fall and with a static motion reach to the next hold. And here we are. We have not seen this last move go down. Will he be the first? And a beautiful static move, Rustam. Rustam's boulder of choice. I think if Rustam was going to set himself a boulder to rock climb, it might have been that one. Yeah, you can see that he turned around for the match there. He will have seen that the judge put their hand up to give him uh, the top as he held it in control. The judge was satisfied that it was in control. He'll be happy to have got that one out of the way after struggling with the first move for so many times. So next up we have Akio and Adam Andra. So Adam being a lot taller than uh, Rushdam and a lot lighter than Jan, it kind of seems like he might have uh, a really good go at this. Yeah, I think uh, also Adam is uh, extremely strong on crimps, as uh, we all know from his out outside achievements. So uh, just figuring out exactly what he needs to do, and uh, he shouldn't have a problem doing it. But that's compounding. And that was a nice static way to do that. Interesting uh, a uh, approach by Adam. Yes, wow. Looked like he just kind of had too much motion in the ocean. I actually think, even from where we're commentating from, I heard Adam power scream for about two seconds long. And where are we commenting from? Uh, we are actually lucky enough to be in very shady inside of the speed climbing wall. Um, so uh, while all the other... Um, Well, all the other competitors that didn't make it into the final and the crowd have to watch from a very sunny viewing platform, we get to commentate in the shade. Definitely not complaining about that. Akio making her way up into the groove, as all the girls have done before her. She, does, she looks slightly more hesitant to bring that left foot up high. trying to work it out there again the Japanese with the pretty plaits and the uh, the hair pieces Akio always has a different hair piece for every comp always has a fingernails painted really struggling to work this out she has used quite a lot of time she's on two minutes on the clock and this is her first attempt yeah with Akio's um, flexibility you would think that this uh would be a quick read for her, but sometimes there's that hesitation that holds you back. But she's out of that sequence, and as we know, into the uh, the root of the root. Oh, Adam Andre, kind of, I don't know, it kind of looked like he was dry firing off that hold. But Akio, with, uh, this is an interesting angle for Akio here. Uh, oh, that's very good opposition, that's very smart, having those hands opposed. And uh, you just by pressing with her shoulders, that's great. All right, Akio is ready to seal the deal on this. She needs to go up very statically. And as we saw, Petra grab the top and Melissa on the bottom. We'll be curious to see how Akio goes for it. Oh, my goodness. Akio with a dynamic move at the end, which is very unlike Akio. Um, that was sad to see, especially after all that work. But... I think she's got enough time on the clock to to get back up there and maybe take a better look at the finishing hold before she hops back on. It kind of looked to me like she she didn't really know what part of the hold to go for. She wanted to go static, but she might have felt like she had to go dynamic and kind of went half-heartedly to to the not very good bit of the hold. But now she'll she'll learn from that. She'll know that that part of the hold isn't very good and hopefully be able to get back to her high point. in order to do it. Adam, 
Adam has been having a few skin troubles during the season. Um, he has been known to bring out a small bowl of water um, because his skin is so dry, just to try and keep it a bit moist. Luckily here in China, the humidity is quite high. So um, we, we don't have a bowl of water coming out with Adam, but um, the conditions are not ideal right now. And he's just missed that crimp. He will not get a top for this block. It is interesting to see how this, uh, this comp is developing. We've got a couple of unexpected, um, unexpected non-tops from climbers who would I, I would have expected to, to top on certain blocks. So it's all in for this one. It could be anyone's game. And the key is off um, a bit earlier than we expected on that one. Um, it's it's too too bad for for Akio there. She was just nearly about to finish that route and um, and yeah, just didn't either didn't know what that hold was at the top or um, yeah, we're not really sure what happened. But we have uh, Zhang Wang Chong out and uh, Katarina Katarina up on female three. Be interesting to see her style of climbing in this corner as well. I believe she has a similar style as uh, Petra. So we'll, uh, maybe we'll see another flash. And Zhang Wang Chong, um, this guy's kind of good on all styles. So with a good uh, first attempt, he was trying the dynamic method by going out right hand and then flipping your left hand quick, which is kind of looks like what the setters wanted. Uh, looks like they wanted a little flip there. Um, but some of the competitors have been able to pinch that upper volume and reach that crimp statically. Mm. Oh, very good. Very good. Zhang Wang Chong with the, uh, the flip. Oh, wow. With basically falling, just pulls himself back onto the wall and definitely slipped off that that blue pinch which uh as we had mentioned before the the temperature is not the best for low angled holds on an overhanging wall uh katiana katarina is uh sitting on the ground obviously with a fall just kind of uh Everyone's laughing at me in here. I'm pointing out the obvious, I guess. <laughs> she's sitting on the she's sitting on the pads, uh, contemplating what just happened. So we'll uh, maybe I don't know if we could pull up a pre uh, um, replay or anything. Not we, I think we missed it, but we'll uh, we'll consult the producer. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we won't need a replay, and she will uh, she'll get back up. Hopefully get a bonus point, being able to get back into that groove. John Wong really struggling with that crimp move, same as Yan. Top of his body is really coming out far from the wall. Um, I think conditions might be getting the better of him here. All the brushing happening right now. I do want to point out that I've never seen or heard uh, Zhang Wang Chong um, yell before. Did you have you ever heard him yell? I don't think I've heard him yell, but I think his stare is uh, is worth a thousand. Uh, yes, and uh, he did yell, missing that that crimp that he had just uh, that he was just fumbling. So I think he's I think he's really in this game for the win here. I know he's been on uh, podium once, and I think he's just kind of bringing out another side of him that. Uh, he might need to, to take the gold. So Katarina here finding the contorted position that the other girls have been to. 
So whether she can find a way that works for her, I think she really needs to get that left foot up onto the foothold. Jung Won also dropping. Men's three again. You can see he's starting to look slightly tired. Katerina looking at the clock. They're both about to have their last goes now. Jung Won looking very serious and not very impressed with himself. So back in he goes. Now we're with Katerina. She really needs to get this foot over to that foothold in the groove. Physically very strong. Katrina and very, very good power endurance. And there is the foot on the hold. She needs to control this movement. No, she doesn't quite get enough weight onto the left foot. I think same as Miho, she might be feeling a couple of strains in her side and her back by pulling into that groove. Hopefully she can uh, get that stretched out back in isolation in time for her last block. So these are the current scores on the doors. So... Rishtam and Zhang Wang. Very, very strong positions. The only two that have done two blocks. Um, with Yan only one attempt to bonus behind Alban, who is currently, Alban is in third. These are the women's. Petra having moved up into first place with that flash of block three. I think that's why she was so happy. She definitely knows um, what she just did and how important that, that block was for her. Um, it'd be a very impressive win if she can hold on to that today. And um, I'd be very excited for her as well. It's been a long time since she's had a podium. So now we have Alban and Miho. Miho, oh, very close to holding the bonus move on women's four. This is her last block. She will be giving it everything to do this now. Uh, Alban also doing very well to get into that uh, press position there. Both blocks seem to be um, needing to palm into a roof. We'll see how some of the taller competitors get on in this gap. Alban is one of the shorter competitors and so fits in there quite nicely. But um, does he have the power in his legs to get out? He has got an injured knee. It is on his right though. He's just peering backwards, trying to look at the holds, and he is down. Wow, with both climbers having to uh, just all points off, jump out of this roof, um, it definitely can be a little, um, uh, I don't know, just weird to look out um, beyond, like over your back, looking into basically the crowd at the holds that you maybe can or can't see. So it's interesting to see... Uh, these moves go down. Uh, it's all. It's very cool. The uh, the setters did a really good job on the uh, male fourth boulder, um, with basically making a, a slab into a very crazy dynamic jump. Um, it looks like uh, it might be a, a one two leading with the left and right hand following in to the bonus hold over the lip, and they're about to take off again. And Miho with much more control on that jump. That was amazing to see. Yeah, she really leaned out. Wow, really twisting around. Nice rose move there. Very good technical, strong climber here with that right foot under the roof. And all we need is to, very nice. That was about second or third, third go for Miho there on women's number four. I think that's definitely a block that some of these girls can flash. It's just whether they are able to hold that jump around the lip first go. I think the rest of the climb technically doesn't really look all that hard. Um, and I think it'll be a good group splitter actually to see um, to see who's going to get lucky with hitting that jug properly and, who, and who's not. So Alban up again. He did take a slightly different approach on his um, on his last go there, not going into the roof, staying wide in the uh, in the groove now it's the men's turn to become a little bit contorted can he get that foot on there it's nearly on oh and he pops down uh, 
It does look like the men are going to have to double hand dyno to the two volumes on the nose. There aren't really any uh, any really holds in between, so it looks like they're going to have to go all out to get hold of those two. I think he knows exactly what he has to do now, and he's only got one more go to execute. See him running there, all four points on the black volume, and he's off. Can Alban stick this jump? So you can see there's no holds on the volumes that he's going to. He looks like he's actually going slightly more static. Really struggling to get that high back step there as well. It doesn't look like a very comfortable position. And he's down. He looks tired. And that is Alban Levier. His competition is over. A very well done to him. He'll now sit back, watch the rest of the climbers, and fingers crossed that he can uh, place in a good position. <laughs> so, fellow teammate Melissa Lenerve is up next for the girls. And for the guys, we have Jan Hoyer. Just wondered where Jan was there for a second. I thought he might have pulled another hold off the wall. Yeah, I think he was out back just breaking holds. Here goes Jan. If there's a boulder for Jan, I would say it was the um, the giant double clutch on slopers in a roof. So we'll see what Jan can uh, pull together here. Oh, there we go. I think Jan, he knows what's up. He knows what he has to do. And Melissa, I think she's uh, she's a smart she's a smart jumper, if that's... Uh, a real thing that exists out there. She's, uh, I think she's, she's going to take this jump down nice and uh, she's going to get her hips out from that, from the wall and, and hopefully just latch that. And I think this flash will really put her up there in the rankings. Oh, that was extremely close hold by Melissa. We can see Jan in the background there fighting and oh, it looked like he slipped off before he jumped that time. He definitely doesn't seem to fit in that gap as well as Alban does, being a much bigger competitor. Almost looks like he's contemplating to go face to, face to the crowd. Um, we'll see if, if that can work for him. I think one thing that Miho did over Melissa was actually go to that dyno with uh, one, two hands. Um, so one first and then quickly join it by the second hand. Melissa just went with one then. So we'll, um, we'll watch what she's thinking next when she gets back on. Jan trying to just press up into the roof a little bit more. Catapulting backwards, I think, on his third attempt now. Don't think he thought the turnaround would be very good. There's definitely not much space. It'd be very impressive to see, try and see him turn around. Melissa getting psyched and contemplating what to do next. I think she does know herself that if she can latch this jump, she's going to the top. So she needs to give herself enough time to rest but also enough time to have enough goers as well. The thing that would solve it all is for her to just top it this time. All right, Melissa. The moment of truth for Melissa. She just got to push those hips out. Oh, ooh, and that was a good tumble. She's back up. If there's one thing that Melissa's known for on the circuit, it is um, falling with extravagance, you might say. She's very flamboyant when she falls off, um, showing a lot of emotion, whether it's a good fall or a bad fall. Unfortunately, it is, uh, is falling and not doing, but I'm sure with a couple more goes, she'll, um, she'll definitely get this block. Jan getting very close there. His timing just looks a little bit off to catch that right hand. And it really doesn't look like the nicest move to jump out from. No, it's also, I'm sure it's disorienting looking back and trying to get the timing um, timing right with that jump. Just coming out of the roof looking backwards is 
is a challenge in itself, so. I think he's got it. I like how he's using the knee there. He used it before, and uh, you got to do what you got to do. Come on, Jan. Here we go. Jan hasn't been in this position yet, I don't think. Oh, yeah. The thing, the thing about that position was uh, he's totally blind for the right hand. Um, so unless he tops this block, it does look like Jan will not be on the podium. And I'm sure, I'm sure that he knows that right now. He's currently sitting in fourth place. Um, he's had too many attempts on the other blocks to move up anymore. He does need this top, and he's down. And Me Melissa, the closest to holding it. Their time is out. They are both finished. The Haiyang Boulder World Cup for them. They will now join the previous competitors, sit and watch, and see what their fate will be. I think this is always sort of the worst bit and the best bit. It's really nice to get to watch your competitors have a climb, but if you're clinging on there to a medal and somebody is uh, in risk of knocking you off that medal, it's pretty much one of the most stressful five minutes you can have. And if you've been there, you will understand what I mean. And if you haven't, um, yeah, you can imagine, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so now we have Minoru. And Shauna Coxey. There are definitely some crimps on this last block for Shauna. Um, yeah, I know that she, she would kind of feel slightly frustrated that she can't try her absolute best in these competitions. I still think it's awesome that she's making finals and she's climbing so well, well in them, um, despite not being at full fitness, but she's working through them really well. and. Yeah, fair play to her for, for doing all of them so far. Has Shauna made um, most finals this season? All of them? Uh, there's one final that she hasn't made, which is Toronto. And since she has been competing, which I think she's in her fourth season now, there's only two finals that she hasn't made. And that was Innsbruck two years ago and uh, Toronto this season. That's a very impressive stat to hold. And... Oh, there she goes, just almost holding that. Yeah, she just kind of leaned out to it. Uh, that was an amazing attempt by her, and I I think judging by the way she uh, controlled that hold for that long, I think she can she can hold it on her next go. Minero eyeing up this move here on his uh, last boulder in his first final. Ooh, and he just kind of like he either slipped or just wasn't confident in that move and pushed himself off the wall there. All right, Sean is up for her second attempt here. Come on, Shauna. Very nice. How she kicked her foot up immediately on that to uh, to uh, counterbalance her weight. That way, there wasn't much of a swing. That was uh, it's an experienced climber. And what do we have here? A figure four? Just kidding. No figure four. Back to, looks like a rose move. Cool angle there. Very cool angle. It's amazing style by Shauna Coxey up here on the head wall of female four. She has two more moves left. She needs to bite down and just get this over with. She's got this. Whoa. Just making it exciting for us to watch by grabbing the finishing jug with her last two fingers and readjusting for the match. Amazing work by Shauna Coxey on her second go.
And that'll be the uh, last boulder for Shauna as she strolls off the stage. Oh, interesting uh, Interesting way to approach the, the dino there um, by Monaro. Monaro, there we go. So this is Monaro's last go. No one so far has stuck the move. Um, Jan was getting close, but um, nice, nice shot at the back of Eddie's head there. I'm not sh quite sure he knows that he's in shot, but oh well. <laughs> back to the main event. Here we go. Can he stick this dino? Very awkward position to go from, and just couldn't quite get the power to jump up. A very hard competition for Minoru. Not getting the points on block two. Falling on the last hold of block three. Um, yeah, um, I hope that he learns a lot from this competition and he takes away it as a as an experience, you know, of, of a final. And let's hope we see more of him in the future. He's definitely a strong a strong climber and pushing the boys. Yeah, it's good to see him uh, new face in finals and uh, hope to see him uh, in Munich. We have, new, uh, we have our new climbers up. We have uh, Rustam. Uh, should be interesting to watch his method uh, if he goes for the dyno or tries to crimp something weird in the roof. And then we got Petro over here on the right. I think Rusa was just trying to crimp something in the roof as I said that, but um, should be cool to see. Oh, he's, uh, yeah, he did what Jan was thinking about doing. And Petra with the flash, this is huge for Petra. She needs to keep this up and she, oh my God. With a, a cat-like reflexes, she's nimble, she's got this. I'm on Petra. Petra's by far strong enough to do this. Mentally, she needs to keep it together. She needs to pray to the rubber gods. A lot of the climbers here have turned around and faced the other way. She's strong enough and powerful enough to, and flexible enough to do it that way. And she will, if I am not mistaken, have just won the gold medal with that performance. Very excited, huge grin. Very happy for Petra right now. I don't know what she's thinking. Sean is there ready to congratulate her. I think she knows as well what's just happened. Again, like I said before, the competitors are all with each other. They all want the best for each other. It's really nice to see those two congratulating just there. Meanwhile, Rushdam <laughs> bunched up in this little roof of his. Can he make this work? Uh, I hope so, because I want to see this go down. I want to see how creative and crazy Rushdam really is. He is eyeing up something. Oh my god, that was, that was almost scary to watch. I reckon if there was a crimp out there, he'd, he'd do it. <laughs> so will he get sucked into doing it that way or will he try it the way that the other guys have been trying with his shorter height? Maybe he thinks he can't make the distance. Um, I think he's gonna, I think it, he might mix it up, but uh, I'm not really sure of his style if he gets sucked into tunnel vision, uh, which is a hard thing to, uh, to avoid in these comps because you're you think you're so close to something but it, it could be the complete wrong way to do it and uh, I like how he just kind of crawled up there like a little squirrel and just <laughs> perched up there he's got at least a good resting spot he, he knows he can do if the time's running down do you know that's why I love this sport the differences between all the competitors the size the weight the l like preferences on different styles of climbing just watching everyone climb in their own ways it's phenomenal, I mean, yeah, there's no right or wrong way, it's just your own. If you, uh, if you make it to the top, you did it the right way. That's bottom line. Here's his last go. This will be amazing. Is he slowly gonna grab this hold? Oh, he's sliding his hand across, oh. You could see just as he made contact with his hands there, his, uh, his opposing foot actually came off the wall, so he couldn't create any tension in his body. 
He does have 30 seconds left, which means he's got another go. I think he felt close to that. I think we're going to see a repeat of what just happened, but he's going to try a lot harder to stay on. That was smart what Rusam just did. He uh, saw the timer and he threw his chalk bag on so he can uh, he can sit up here on this volume and deep pump, chalk up, and he's got, yeah, 14 seconds on the clock. So yeah, you can hear the timer clicking down now. So here we go, Rushdown back up in his groove. Rushdown sliding out to this hold. This is the movie fell off before. He needs the tension in his body and he hasn't quite got enough. Bow to the crowd and his comp is over. So two more competitors down. Next two to come out, Adam Andre and Akio Noguchi. So if Akio wants the silver medal, she has to complete this climb within five attempts. I'm pretty sure Akio is very capable of doing that. We'll see, but as it stands, Petra has got the top spot. Um, and she will stay there. She has got the gold medal. Shauna and then Akio. Akio can take the silver off Shauna if she does it within five. Goes. So we shall see what happens. Here we are with the boys. John Wan sitting on top at the moment. Adam needs to top this. In one go. Adam needs to flash this if he wants to uh, move up the scoreboard. He has made the move that Rushdam couldn't. Okay, and if Adam wants a medal, he has six attempts to do this boulder. Akio on the side of the frame there latches the dino. I believe this is her first go. Adam very close to holding that dino. It's the closest that we've seen yet. The left hand seemed to rip off slightly. Ikio making uh, light work of the last part of this climb, looking very chilled. The top of it does look way below her actual climbing ability. So as long as she can keep it together, she is about to take the silver from Shauna. So there we have it. Petra with the gold. Akio with the silver. Do you think Akio knows that uh, she didn't win even though she just topped the boulder? Yeah, I think uh, from the cheers of the crowd, um, definitely in isolation, you have a pretty good idea of what someone's done. Um, I think she'll know that she, by not doing the third boulder, she won't have won. Just because Petra did it so quickly, she will have come back in very quick. Um, whether or not she knows where she's come against Shauna, I'm not so sure, but she'll definitely know that she's on the podium. Um, and Petra has broken Akio's run of the gold medal this season. Um, it, uh, t if I'm going to be really honest, Petra was not the climber who I would have put forward to have done that, but fa absolutely fair play to uh, Petra. She climbed her socks off today. Very well-deserved gold medal. Adam back on. Yeah, Adam looks um, really energized right now. <laughs> he's kind of, I think he's, I think he's really psyched to do this boulder. I'd be really surprised if he didn't do it this go right here. Hopefully he can control his uh, psych and frustration almost, a mix of the both and actually hold this bonus hold. Oh, they look very greasy, those volumes. He's not really getting much contact off that left one whatsoever. And that is a big jump.
Okay, so. So far. Um, what you're about to see now is the current um, ranking. Sorry about that. Sorry for my little hesitation there. Before this competition, um, this is the current overall standings. So you'll see the points there on the right-hand side. After the competition is over and all the points have been confirmed, um, I'm sure they will change slightly, but we'll see how each climber is affected. Because of that, uh, because of the different wins here and slightly unexpected climbers doing well, I think it will all be down to Munich as to actually who wins the overall and who wins second and third as well. Adam back here in the groove. Not quite sure what he wants to do here. This is his last attempt. Adam showing us his hip flexibility there. Maybe he's been training with the Japanese. <laughs> power scream, token power scream from Adam. He has got the weight onto that volume. Can he control his other hand over there? He's in a very strenuous position right now. That hand is right behind his back. He does not have much space to move into. If there's one person that can worm through, it's Adam. I thought he was gonna match behind his back then. That would have been interesting to see a uh, behind-the-back match, but I, I'm really curious to see what his plan is or if he has one. He is, yeah, he's following through with some sort of plan he's got. He's got, wow, he's got to slow down a little. Is he going to be able to reach out to that bonus and then flip that left hand? This is, uh, this is intense. Come on, Adam. Oh, wow. Again, just ripping off with that left hand. A very tired looking salute to the crowd. As his last attempt on that last block, his competition is over. I'm not sure he's the happiest with that performance by his body language, by his face as well, just to look at it. But um, you can't say the boy didn't try. So up now, Jong Won and Katarina. The last competition, the last competitors of this competition, should I say. Jong Won does have gold at this point, so he can climb for fun right now. Unfortunately for Katarina, having qualified for the finals in first, she's currently sitting in sixth place. I don't think she can uh, better this score either, so she is also climbing for fun. Uh, having said that, if she does flash it, she will move to fifth. So, this climb right now is to move up one place. And there we go, fifth place for Katarina. Very good effort. She knows she can climb strong. She qualified for finals in first. Finishes in fifth. I guess. Um, I guess that's what climbing twice in the day does in this heat. Yeah, it just goes to show you that um, the styles of the boulders um, can have an effect in, in how you position too. If the boulders set for you, uh, then you'll come out on top. And if they're slightly to your disadvantage, as we just saw with uh, Katarina and Jan, it's going to be a lot harder for them to, to pull out on top. So Jong Won already with the gold. He will have banked his uh, first place points for this competition. They will. It will all go down into Munich for all the medals. It's anybody's anybody's game. That was a really exciting time for climbing, actually. You know, sometimes in the past there's always been one person who's already won way up front. It's kind of nice that it's all open for a change. Yeah, very cool, very cool. And with uh, with that being said, I would love, even though Jong Wong Chong is already. One, I would love to see this boulder or this dino go down, and I think this is the man for it. Oh, wow. It might be that the root setters have slightly overcooked this last block for the boys. It's definitely a very big jump. Uh, 
And these boys do look slightly tired now. They've made them they've made them do quite a lot of hard climbing, as you would expect in a final, even so. This last one might just be one jump too far. But um Yeah, I mean, they have already climbed seven boulders and they're on their eighth boulder. And uh, it don't seem that they've gotten uh, easier at all. Uh, as we've seen, no tops on uh, M4. And every boulder that we've seen so far has, has had a top by the boys today. So um, will the setters have completed their task by not allowing anyone to the top of this boulder? We'll see. Jung Wong back on for another go. 30 seconds left on the clock. He didn't look very close on his last attempt, if I'm honest. He, um, not sure what he's going to try and do again here. Looks like he's, he's almost jumping. He's almost doing half a somersault by the look of it. He's just realized he's got 10 seconds to get back on the climb. This is his last go of the competition. This is the last competitor of the competition. None he gets. He hasn't taken his short bag. So uh, no resting for him. Repeating the same way that he's done. Not sure he really knows what to do at this point. Just having a little breather. He's gonna try and put his foot back up and jump backwards. Wow. He looked a lot closer to holding that that time, but nowhere near with his left hand, so. There we have it. Haiyang Boulder World Cup 2015 is over come into an end. Hopefully one day, Josh, me and you will be in the final and we won't have to commentate. However, seeing as though we have been commentating, I hope we haven't made your ears bleed. Uh, a little shaky at the start, but uh, we got us, we got, I think we got a swing at the end of it, don't you think? Yeah, I think we nailed it. Uh, uh, it, was a, it was definitely a great time. It was cool uh, hanging with you for sure. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see the official results. Um, I think right now we have unofficial results. So we'll see. We have uh, in the bouldering and the we have Zhang Wang Chong with uh, the two and the three for the for the win. It looks like uh, Rustam with two and seven, and uh, believe it or not, with a, with one top with a flash, um, you're in third with Albon Leva and Jan Hoyer in fourth. And here we have the girls, uh, the girls final finalists, first to sixth. Petra up on top with three flashes. That is an epic result for her. Akio Noguchi just stealing the silver from Shauna Coxie on the last block. Uh, Shauna taking the bronze with three and eight. Um, Maiho only doing two blocks and so off the podium. So there we have it, our girls podium. Thank you very much for tuning in. We are now gonna sign off. Um, and as quick as we can get this video uploaded so that you can watch it. Uh, <laughs> um, thank you all for listening. Um, I'm Leah Crane. Josh Larson, and cheers. <laughs>